What's up, beautiful? It's Lisa Roulette, and today we're going to talk about the long overdue subject of grief. I know a lot of us have had our personal tragedies and losses, but collectively in the past two years, we have experienced so much loss. Loss of a way of life that we were very comfortable with, loss of certain personal freedoms, and also loss of a future that was predictable and reliable. So in this video, I want to talk about healing grief from an energy healer's perspective. And I hope to give you some practices that you can use in your everyday life to supplement with any sort of healing modalities that you're using today. If you don't already know who I am, I'm here to help you heal, navigate your ascension journey, and create a life you love. If you're in the midst of your spiritual awakening on the healing path, or you're learning how to manifest your life experiences, you've come to the right place, if you're a starseed empath or light worker, you certainly are at home. And if not, welcome to the family. We'd love to have you. So what is grief? Grief is a neurobiological response to trauma and trauma leaves a legacy unless we are very mindful of moving the energy of the trauma out of the energy body. And this is really, really important. If we do not move the energy out of the energy body, it will leave lasting imprints in the auric field, dictating our experiences in this lifetime and potentially many lifetimes to come. So it is important that we take individual accountability for the energies associated with grief that we're holding on to now. And I know that's really difficult because we didn't cause it, right? We didn't cause the trauma and the grief. Nevertheless, it is important that we take responsibility and accountability for working with the energies of grief. Now, the energies of grief primarily root in the root chakra, the first chakra. They also affect the entire chakra column, including the heart chakra. But I'm going to talk a little bit about the root and root practices so that you can really start to mobilize that energy and really start to move grief out of the energy body in a lasting way. So the first step that I would encourage you to use is to recognize that you are grieving. Self-awareness is the first step on any healing journey to really call it out and say, okay, I'm grieving. This isn't actually that easy because oftentimes when we are grieving, we're in a fight or flight response. Our nervous system is in overdrive and we lose clarity, confidence, and calm. So we don't know what's actually happening. For me, I have been riding this wave of grief for the past week and it was actually very difficult, even for me as a healer, to call out what I was experiencing. But as soon as I determined that, okay, undeniably, I am experiencing very high levels of grief right now, then I could surrender to it. So after becoming self-aware and calling it out, the next step is to surrender to it. If you haven't seen my video on the art of surrender, I'll link it in the description of this video below. But as a healer of your life experience, it's going to be very important for you to master the art of surrender. Some of you may be able to do this effortlessly right now. Others may need a facilitator like a therapist, coach, counselor, or another healer. That is perfectly fine. The art of surrender, we call it the art of surrender because it takes time to master the art and it can be very confusing at first. Generally speaking, what it means is to take that high self witness observer position and to be able to observe the frequencies of grief's grief without judging them or the overall vibrational frequency that is in the auric field without judging them, but instead discerning the frequencies, being able to you know, become increasingly familiar with the qualities of the vibrational frequencies that we're holding onto in the auric field. Because as a second step of self-awareness, being able to not just call out the feeling that describes the vibrational frequencies, but also to get familiar with the vibrational frequencies themselves, it allows us to mobilize the energy much faster and in a smoother way. Once you have surrendered to it by observing the frequencies, the next thing that you want to do is mobilize your breath or call in your breath. Breath is the gateway to higher consciousness and grief is a very low level of consciousness. It is a contracted state of awareness and keeping in mind that 
when we're in a contracted state of awareness, it's very difficult to see the, the potentials and possibilities for our future, but also the remedies to our wounds. So using breath as the gateway to higher consciousness and really coming into the present moment where all healing is going to occur. Next, you definitely want to rest. It is a tremendous amount of responsibility to hold on to the frequencies of grief, and you need to recognize that by honoring the physical body and giving it some downtime. But it needs to be gently balanced with physical activity because the root chakra loves physical activity. Anything from walking in nature, walking barefoot, gentle stretching, yoga, or gentle jogging are really good activities to keep that energy moving along. Next, it's really good to employ the throat chakra by speaking or describing your feelings, even if they seem a little maybe crazy or not real, still you want to be using that throat chakra. Now, a lot of people will go through talk therapy in grief, and I'm not suggesting that you don't go through talk therapy, but one of the reasons talk therapy is so ineffective from a long-term healing perspective is because it's typically not backed by the intention of moving the energy. That is problematic. You need to set the intention to move the energy by using the vibrational frequency of the words that leave the throat chakra and literally allow that energy to move beyond the physical body through the auric field and out into the universe. If you don't intend that, then it becomes a big old mess of reliving your experiences over and over again. And that's not good. The, right? That just ends up imprinting more of your energy field with grief. So if you're working with a traditional therapist or you're in talk therapy, make sure you master the art of intention as well and really visualizing the energy of the grief moving through the, the crown, down through the third eye, into the throat and out out through the throat chakra. You can even employ the assistance of divine will, which comes through the back of the throat chakra and visualize that divine will pushing out the words with a bigger or greater thrust, moving it out through the auric field and out into the universe. The next thing that you can do is massage. The root chakra is associated with the first auric layer, and in the first auric layer is our skin. So asking a friend, family, family member, or a professional massage therapist to massage the body for you will absolutely mobilize the energy of grief, keeping in mind that you should always back it by intention, intention to actually move that energy. And finally, one of my favorite practices that I've been using for years is self acupressure. The two points I like most for grief are CV17, which is right here, and LU1, which is right about here. You can certainly Google these to become more accurate with your pressure points. CV17 is also known as the Sea of Tranquility, which of course we would like to employ when we're grieving. And also LU1 is also called the letting go point, which of course we'd also like to do when we're grieving. When you're using acupressure on yourself, you want to breathe into the pressure. And when you release the pressure, you want to breathe out. And again, you can employ a visualization. As you breathe in, you're breathing in that life force energy, allowing it to come down into the pressure point. And as you breathe out, imagine that life force energy pushing it out with thrust through the physical body out to the energy body, which is the auric field, and ultimately out into the universe. Now to master these techniques, you're definitely going to want to employ a journal. Journaling on how you feel before the technique and journaling on how you feel after the technique. Obviously, you want to lean into the techniques that you feel best after. The more you journal, the more you're going to become familiar with yourself as a healer. And that is so wonderful because that will give you greater acceptance that you can indeed take the leading role as healer of your life experience and healer of any grief that you experience now and in going forward. That's a wrap for this video, my friends. As always, give me a thumbs up if you like the content today. Share it with someone you love if you think it will help them. And if you dig my vibe, please consider subscribing. Stay in the luminosity of your beautiful light and never forget you are loved.